During the reign of Elizabeth I, there were many plots to depose and even assassinate the Queen. One of the greatest problems she faced during her queenship was focused around religion and the fact that the Catholics in her country were not happy with the fact she was ruling over them. Many wished for another woman to become Queen of England, Mary Queen of Scots, and Elizabeth's cousin Mary caused her many problems. In fact, Elizabeth was even forced to order the execution of Mary following the severity of the plots, such was the threat to the Protestant Queen Elizabeth. Today we look at the story of one of these plots to kill Elizabeth and replace her with Mary Queen of Scots. Today we look at the brutal execution of Anthony Babington and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. When considering the plots against Elizabeth, it's important to understand the animosity that many Catholics had towards her. As time went on, they were forced to pay hefty fines for not attending Church of England services and they felt victimised in Elizabethan society. So they looked towards another woman who many Roman Catholics believed to be the legitimate heir to the throne. Elizabeth's mother had been Anne Boleyn, whose marriage to Henry VIII caused no end of issues, with Henry breaking from Rome and subsequently splitting up with his first wife Catherine of Aragon, who was a Catholic, so he could marry Anne Boleyn. When Anne Boleyn had her head chopped off inside the Tower of London after being found guilty of incest, adultery and treason, it was believed that she would never rule over England. Her legitimacy was cast into serious doubt, especially with concerns about her mother and father's marriage. So Catholics turned to another woman who they wished to be Queen of England, Mary Queen of Scots. However, she suffered during her life too. Her love life and marriages were shambolic and in 1568, she was forced to leave Scotland, having been imprisoned, and looked to her cousin Elizabeth for safety. In 1568, the Pope himself issued a papal bull, giving English Catholics the authority to overthrow Queen Elizabeth, and from this, Mary Queen of Scots became the first one plotters turned to. Many plots focused on removing Elizabeth from the English throne, placing Mary on it, and some of these even planned to kill the English Queen. One of these plots would result in the death of the woman that so many English Catholics wished to become their queen. Anthony Babington was born into a gentry family and his wealthy Catholic family lived in Derbyshire. As a child he was given the job as a page boy in the Earl of Shrewsbury's household and the Earl was a jailer for Mary Queen of Scots. During this time Babington would have served her as she was imprisoned following Elizabeth arresting her once she entered England. It's likely that this is when he formed an attachment to the Scottish Queen and he became a supporter of her at this time. Around the year 1580, he began to travel around Europe and he met other conspirators and was convinced to carry letters to Mary while she was still being held in prison. Babington also helped in moving Catholic priests around the Midlands and keeping them hidden and out of trouble. These actions could have easily seen him being executed for the crime of harbouring priests. Around 1586, Mary moved custody to Tutbury and she was treated harsher and Babington's role as a messenger to the Catholic Scottish Queen came to an end. He received letters from France that were addressed to Mary but had to decline passing them on because his access to Mary had become more difficult. He also began to consider leaving England permanently and met with a man named Robert Pooley who was in fact a secret agent working for Elizabeth's spymaster Francis Walsingham, the Secretary of State. Pooley had been told to infiltrate Catholic circles and had built up trust with Babington. Elizabeth was fearful of the prospect of being ousted from the throne in favour of Mary and the threat was at a time of intense religious tension between Catholics and Protestants. For this she did employ a security force to infiltrate different groups and to conduct secret operations. During one of these investigations, a suspect named Gilbert Gifford was picked up, arrested and interrogated, and to avoid punishment, he agreed to act as a double agent. He made contact with the French and arranged the smuggling of letters from Mary to her conspirators. This was to be done using beer barrels with letters being hidden in them. In March 1586, Babington and six of his friends gathered in the plough and in near to Temple Bar and they debated the prospect of breaking Mary Queen of Scots out of prison, assassinating Elizabeth and creating a rebellion supported by foreign powers and a subsequent invasion of England. Gifford would find out about this plot 
and offered his assistance to Babington with the method of carrying secret messages from the conspirators to Mary Queen of Scots through a friend who was a brewer. Obviously Gifford was a double agent at the time and he met with Babington to talk about the plot. Babington initially didn't fully trust Gifford and he wrote his letter in a cipher. This cryptic message was made up of 23 symbols with different symbols being swapped for letters and a number of symbols also represented words and phrases. There were also four null symbols that didn't signify anything and also a symbol dictating a double letter. Mary would receive the code book in which she could then decipher the message so the messages to the Catholic threat to Elizabeth's throne were very secretive. These letters were taken by Gifford straight to Francis Walsingham and he then paid counterfeiters to make a copy of the letter after the seal was broken and then to reseal the original letter with an identical stamp. The letter was then taken by Gifford and delivered to Mary Queen of Scots. The letter was then deciphered by Thomas Phillips who managed to break the code. Eventually he was able to work out the message and it was evident that the message suggested the assassination of Queen Elizabeth I. Francis Walsingham now had all he needed to arrest and convict Anthony Babington of treason, but he knew there were bigger things at play than just a Catholic suggesting to kill the Queen. He let the conspiracy continue as he realised it could bring Mary Queen of Scots down too, and with the evidence gained by Babington's letters, he could bring an end to her threat once and for all. The code had already been broken, so it was very easy for further messages to be translated. Mary Queen of Scots would reply back to Babington, signing in a sense her death warrant, but also agreeing to be part of the plot. She replied with, when all is ready, the six gentlemen must be set to work, and you will provide that on their design being accomplished, I may be myself rescued from this place. Walsingham now had damning evidence against Babington and Mary, but wanted the names of all the conspirators involved. He ordered a forgery of Mary's letter to be sent, in the hopes that this would help Babington to reveal the names involved in the plot. It said, I would be glad to know the names and qualities of the six gentlemen, which are to accomplish the assignment, for it may be that I shall be able, upon knowledge of the parties, to give you some further advice necessary to be followed therein, as also from time to time particularly how you proceed. Because of how good the forgery was, and how the cipher had been cracked, Babington began to trust what was happening, but he himself was being tricked. John Ballard was the first to be arrested after a meeting with the conspirators in London on the 4th of August 1586. During his torture, he confessed everything and also implicated Anthony Babington in the plot to kill Elizabeth and replace her with Mary Queen of Scots. There were other members of the conspiracy who were arrested, along with Babington, including two of Mary's secretaries. Babington was taken to the Tower of London and was imprisoned on suspicion of treason and the plot to kill the Queen. All of the conspirators were sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered after being found guilty of treason. Because of how large the conspiracy was, there were two groups who were executed. During his imprisonment, Babington had his house searched and his wife was forced to flee to avoid being implicated in the conspiracy. Babington had also made an offer to the Queen of a thousand pounds in order to be pardoned, but this was rejected, and the first set of seven executions was set for the 20th of September 1586. Babington at the time was a man of 24, and this was still very young for a man to be deeply caught in such a political plot. On the 20th of September 1586, seven Catholic men, including Babington, were bound to hurdles in the Tower of London, and were dragged west on their final journey through the busy streets of London to their place of execution. A scaffold had been erected in some fields near to Holborn at a place known as St Giles Field. Here a crowd had gathered to watch the proceedings and to watch the deaths of seven men who were deemed to have been traitors to the English realm and guilty of one of the most serious crimes. The crowd was so big that thousands had turned up to watch them die and the authorities and guards had fenced off the site to stop men on horseback blocking the view. The gallows had also been raised rather high so that everyone could see the execution and that justice had been done with the deaths of these traitors. The seven men to be executed were John Ballard, John Savage, Chidioc Tichborne, Charles Tilney, Edward Abingdon, 
Robert Barnwell and of course Anthony Babington. The other seven conspirators involved would die the next day and a week after they had all been tried at Westminster and found guilty of treason. They were all to be hanged, drawn and quartered. They were executed in the usual manner for someone deemed to be a traitor. However, the execution was carried out in horrifically brutal fashion. One after each other, the men were left to swing briefly on the gallows and struggle. However, they were not killed in this way. When half dead, they were cut down and allowed to regain consciousness. The condemned members of the Babington plot were then forced to watch as an executioner cut off their genitals, sliced open their stomachs and pulled out their insides with a knife. Then eventually these insides were thrown onto a burning fire and even the hearts of the conspirators were allegedly cut out and burned. Following this the bodies of the plotters were cut up into bits with their severed heads being placed above the gallows. It was said that Anthony Babington was the second of the seven to die and experienced this horrific execution. The first was John Ballard and Babington was forced to watch his former friend undergo this horrific ordeal and he didn't even remove his hat and stood frozen at the gallows. The other conspirators turned away and fell to their knees praying but Babington stood without removing his hat. He was then taken to the gallows and executed in this horrific manner with his last words being, spare me Lord Jesus. The next day seven more men linked to the plot that bared Anthony Babington's name were executed for their involvement in the treachery against Queen Elizabeth. Interestingly one of the seven who died on the 20th in the first group blamed Babington for drawing him into the conspiracy during his speech on the gallows. The Babington plot today is known for being a very real threat to Elizabeth I's reign and life. However the biggest effect of the plot was the fact that following this Mary Queen of Scots was deemed to be too much of a problem for Elizabeth. Because of her involvement in this plot and also of her plans, her execution following her long imprisonment was ordered. Mary Queen of Scots was executed at Fotheringhay Castle on the 8th of February 1587 after being deemed to be involved in the plots. The evidence gathered from the Babington plot was really what signed her death warrant with Mary being complicit in agreeing to the plan. But Anthony Babington himself was just a young man of 24 when he was executed, but he was a man who deeply involved himself in political treachery, religious instability and also the quest to replace the Queen of England with a monarch he deemed to be more suited to the Catholics. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel please make sure to subscribe and once again thank you so much for watching.